they came from the record stores I was always shopping at. Um, but it never occurred to me to screen print, never occurred to me to do color uh, reproductions or do any of that stuff until 10 years ago. Maybe not even that. Was it a pretty natural thing? I mean, or did, was it, are you just looking to change forms? or? Um, I think it was necessity. I think it was actually completely driven by people started buying early flyers and then they started saying that they wanted color. So I did color and they started buying those and then they said they wanted screen prints. So uh, I started doing those. Did you get tired of it? A little different too. Like if you look at some of your old flyers, they're considerably different. Than they are. Our work is way different. Than it's, it, the whole thing is completely different from my early explorations or early flyer work, it, which I would figure would be very sort of punk rock in a lot of ways, regardless of the content, even though I have never been even remotely a punk in any way. Um, hence, see Steely Dan on uh, junior never high school. Punk rock. Um, you know, I totally got into Generation X when I was uh, just out of high school, and so that was my first foray, Sex Pistols, Billy Idol, mm -hmm. Generation X. Do you remember your first poster? My first poster, uh, my first poster was for a band called Straight Jacket Lucy. They were a friend's band when I was loosely going to college in Missouri. Uh, they were really great. They were very uh, influenced by uh, the very first uh, Jane's Addiction records. Um, uh, and then, and I was just someone who drew all the time, so they asked me to start doing flyers. And uh, that was it, that was the first ones. I never really thought about it too much until uh, probably another year later that um, the local club in town, uh, I needed to figure out a way to not pay to get in and to have beer. So I combined, I'll do flyers for you and you give me a beer tab and I don't have to pay to get in. <laughs> and they said yes and then I did so many flyers that I had such a huge beer tab that I could buy beer for everyone in the club and they would, kept forcing me to go to shows because I needed to use this beer tap. Uh, and so I was pretty drunk for a while. <laughs> but that was pretty fun and it was old. I would uh, hand paint all the artwork um, and then we'd run off color Xeroxes back when a color copy was almost three dollars and uh, it'd take them about 20 minutes to print out one. Uh, so we'd get seven of them if they had $21 in the, in the you know spare change fund to print these things. Um, but it was pretty cool. I mean, I uh, I love reading your bio. It's pretty witty. Yeah. You pretty you got a good dry sense of humor. <clears throat> yeah. and, uh, How serious can you be about any of this stuff? <laughs> well, you've been doing it for a little while. A little while, but yeah. not that long. Um, you talk about. Uh, I mean, you're a pretty good writer, man. Like, are you uh, you gonna do a book sometime? You know, there are some, the idea of doing a book has raised its head recently, and so I'll explore that as much as I can. I'm not going to be writing a novel, if that's mm -hmm. what you mean, but I was always a creative writer in high school. I'm a, you know, I was the long-haired guy with the Van Halen t-shirt in Honors English that no one, you know, wondered why he was, what he was doing there. Can you talk to me about, um, I gotta ask you about Guitar Hero. No, it's a mm -hmm. <laughs> But there's not too much to say about Guitar Hero. Guitar is not even around anymore, is it? Are they out of business? Oh well. Uh, uh, seemed like a cool thing. A lot of people have uh, actually would comment on that or, or wonder where they saw some artwork, and then uh, later it would turn out that they saw it in Guitar Hero Three. But the the simple short question or answer is that uh, I got an email one day and they wanted to buy some very specific pieces to use in the game and then commission one piece of artwork for some menu or another and then they picked um, three or four items that would have the very least to do with heroes or guitars or <laughs> electric rock in any way uh, and that was always very strange. Um. So it was interesting, but not terribly interesting. Although there was a couple times when they were having Guitar Hero Night at a bar where there was an uh, art show was going on, and people would kept looking at the at the television, and then looking at the wall, and looking at the television, and looking at the wall, and you could see the questions in their head, and they couldn't figure out how to ask, why is the artwork on the wall on the television in the game? And it's like, <laughs> eventually you get around to it. Did you have something, question, young man? Oh, go ahead. No, sure. I, they don't really apply anymore. I was just wondering like, when you were talking about the pre-internet days, if you miss those days, and, and the, the uh, instant feedback from thousands of people that have nothing better to do than anonymously critique. <laughs> <work. laughs> you have some experience with this? 
Are you an obsessive uh, computer I'm hacker? You made it nice. <laughs> um, you know, this would look better in blue. You know, I, I was thinking about it the other day because I used to use my boss's computer to do uh, compositing, which uh, on my for my flyers, which meant nothing more than printing out a black version of artwork that I could run off on a transparency, so I could overlay the type on top of uh, a color piece of artwork. Uh, hand trying to hand register a piece of graphic from Corel Draw, maybe.